If you don't have many floral stamp sets, then today's technique is perfect for you. Welcome back. It's time for another Take Two with Therese at Altenew and I have the most beautiful flower to share with you. This is from the Here For You stamp set and I love the fonts in this set as well. But today we're going to be focusing on that large single flower and I'm going to share with you a couple of fun ideas to create multi-flower cards using just one image. So I'm working on a piece of 80 pound Nina cardstock and it's cut to the same size as my card front. This is an A2 panel so four and a quarter by five and a half inches and what I'm doing here is actually stamping out my flower image to create a frame to put my sentiment in. I am using some permanent black ink here and my stamping wasn't the best. I had an off day today with stamping but we'll probably talk about that a little bit more later on and to be honest, when it doesn't work out perfectly, by the time you finish colouring an image, it typically will be okay. <laughs> Everything will be okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I did create only one mask of a flower and a leaf here and I use it on both my cards. I did minimal masking here and that just makes the process so much quicker. So this is a large image, but you could do this with any floral image that you have. Even if it's a smaller one, you would just need to be a bit more careful about stamping it to create the frame. And isn't it? It is a beautiful flower. So I did miss stamp on the edge here, and that was actually a portion of the stem of the flower, so I turned it into a leaf. I accidentally grabbed the large, see it wasn't a good stamping day, <laughs> I accidentally grabbed the large marker, um, fine point marker to draw it in and it did turn out a bit heavy but by the time I coloured it with the dark green you probably will never ever know. So I was using my artist markers today and that's why I wanted to use the permanent black ink here because I know it's compatible and I'm going to share some, not all, of the colouring because basically each flower and the leaves, they were all coloured the same and I did keep it fairly simple. I will list all of the colours and all of the stamp sets and products that I used. They'll be linked in the description below and they will also be at the blog post which will be linked in the description below as well. So I'd like you to let me know what is one of your favourite tricks to using a multiple image on a card? doesn't have to be a flower, but what do you like? Do you like to do a, a card that has like more of a geometric design? Maybe you like to cut um, circle windows and repeat an image that way. There is so many different ways that you could do this and or Maybe you like to colour them, have the same image, but colour them different colours. It does make it look different. Today I did stick with the same colours for both of my card designs, but that's just because I like it to be all matchy-matchy. <laughs> but this would have looked just as beautiful had I chosen two or three or four different colours for these flowers. So I... I'm actually creating a bit of shadowing on these petals here. They are fairly um, non-realistic, really, as far as a lot of the flowers go that Altenew do. They are they're typically more real. These ones can be used either real, more realistic, like I'm doing here, or you can sort of just do a solid colour. You could also do some stamping onto coloured cardstock and do some paper piecing. These flowers would be beautiful for that as well. When I'm doing my shading I like to actually add my layers of the artist marker, come back in after I've done my initial blend out and add the darker colour again and not re-blend it. And I also you may notice I do come in with a, a dark grey and that will also add some really nice 
shadows and make it just look that little bit more realistic here. These markers are such beautiful colours and I've been doing a lot of um, watercolours and things lately so it's really nice to head back to the markers and get a feel for them again. So I did go ahead and finish all the colouring on this panel and then stamped a simple sentiment which is from the Simply the Best stamp set. I did use the grid lines on my Misty. It's a two-piece uh, sentiment that I was planning on doing but I actually when I stamped out the second one here I used some obsidian black ink to do it. It was just I don't know if you can tell, I'm sure you can because it was the first thing I noticed it's just slightly off, it's not perfectly straight with the first sentiment so here's the way I got around fixing that, I drew a line in between the two sentiments which I planned on doing anyway, it was still looking a little bit off I just while I was thinking about what to do <laughs> I attached it to the front of a side fold card and I decided to add a heart enamel dot and this is from the Essentials black and white enamel dot set. I initially used one of the small hearts but wasn't so keen on that so I did come in and add a large heart and I set it right at the end of that fine line marker line that I'd made there and I think that just did help uh, level it out with the eye. Let me know. <laughs> Do you think I saved it or does it still look really crooked to you? <laughs> I didn't want to start again and I didn't want to cover up, cover up the flowers. That was the other option I could have stamped and covered up. Um, done like an oval sentiment and set it up in the middle. But I didn't want to do that. Anyway, let me know. All right, so my second idea today is to create my own garden bed of flowers. So what I mean by that is I'm basically going to stamp my flower repeatedly across the lower portion of the card. I am going to fill most of the, oh this is an A2 Nina 80 pound cardstock panel again, but I am going to fill most of it with flower images. So I did need to mask off the image that I wanted to be at the front which was the one where I've faced the flower on kind of an angle and down near the bottom portion center of the panel and then I can stamp my other two flower images on either side of that and just facing them in slightly different angles because even though it's the same flower that I've stamped each time it does help make them look a little bit different if you've angled them differently. Another way that you could make them look different too is to change up the colours or the colouring on them. I did have to come in again <laughs> even though I'd masked. I misstamped and I came in with my fine liner and added an extra bit of leaf here <laughs> and joined up a couple of lines that weren't perfectly stamped but once it's all colored you're never going to know now this time I did stamp it with some obsidian black ink because I thought it would be fun to color with my woodless coloring pencils this time and I am choosing similar colors and I will only share one of the flowers and a couple of leaves with you because basically pencil coloring does take a long time I find it very relaxing so for me it wasn't a drama just to sit here and, and colour. I find it um, a nice time just to turn the music up or watch some YouTube videos and just colour and relax. So to me it's fun. <laughs> but I won't share it all with you because it did take quite a while to do. Now the way that I do my colouring is I basically came in here with the darker blue first and added my basic shading. I am using a really light touch, touch, <laughs> touch with the pencils because I don't want to fill the tooth of the paper too quickly because if I do press too heavily on the cardstock 
then the paper's not going to hold any more colour and then I can't come in and sort of change the colours or add shades or add more colour, which is what I like to do with the pencils. I find pencils are one of the easiest mediums to use because you can change it up by just layering them as long as you don't press too heavily. The downfall is that they are slow to colour with. <laughs> so I did not use any Gamsol or blending solution here and I find that these, even though they're sort of a wax based pencil, I find that these don't tend to create a bloom like some other wax based pencils do. The black outline from the obsidian ink stayed nice and true. I didn't need to come back over and restamp the outline at all. The way that I mixed the colour on these petals and flowers was actually with the pencil itself. So I added the darker colour in the shading first and in some of the petals to create sort of the highlights and the depths and then I came in with the lighter colour and actually coloured over top and that kind of blends it out. Then I can come in again with the darker colour to re-add in some more depth and finally I'll always come in with the jet black as well or a dark grey. I find that works really well just to give lots of lots more um, shading and definition. I'm not sure if you're going to hear my dogs chasing rabbits. <laughs> Okay, I will list all the pencil colours that I've used uh, at the blog. So if you are interested in seeing which ones I did use, head to the blog post and you'll find them there. So when I'd sort of finished on my first layer of colour, or lots of layers, um, I wanted, like I said, to keep these fairly similar. I noticed that I'd, I had chosen colours that I knew were going to be a bit bluer than the other. <laughs> but... I had picked this colour out earlier. This one is the Volcano Lake and it just looked too green but it actually worked perfect as an overlay colour to add some extra depth and make it more true to the other colours that I'd used on the other flower with the Artis Marcus. Now for this card I did another simple sentiment with some obsidian ink and this one is actually from The Amazing Things and I just love all the swirly fonty bits on these sentiments in this set. And this card panel here is just slightly smaller than the front of my top fold card. I just adhered it directly to the card base and I thought just to keep it all matchy matchy I thought it'd be fun to add another enamel heart to this design as well. I do hope that today's video has inspired you to have a look at your floral stamps and perhaps try a couple of new techniques in making multi-floral cards. Thanks for joining me here today. Till next time. Bye.